International Festival of Poetry 2023. Feel glory to glory. Just from you, oh God, they will receive something tonight. Grant unto your servant utterance. Grant to me auction. Take over my vocal cords. Take over my faculties. Speak to your people. Touch your people. Pull your people close to yourself. Break the word. Illuminate our hearts. Do something here. Do something tonight. We worship you. We lift you up. We ask you take the glory. Change us from glory to glory. Do that which only you can do. Do that which only you can do. The house is your house. Let the glory of the latter house be greater than the former. Show us your glory. Reveal yourself to us. Fill us with your presence. Fill us with your presence. Visit us tonight. Visit us tonight. Visit us tonight. Show us the dimensions of glory. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let the garment be released. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Can I have a louder amen? Put your hands together for Jesus. Appreciate the choir. Clap for them as they come back. Keep clapping, keep clapping, keep pull those hands together if you don't mind. Thank you, choir. Clap for them, would you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can have God. You can say that. It's not every time that I pray the way I pray. That's where I pray in my closet. So I don't know why I brought my clothes there to public today. I was not meant to pray, but I prayed in public the way I pray in my closet. That's how I do my thing when I'm alone with God. Even in church, I don't do it this way. I only do it when I sense the Holy Ghost on me. It's, so it's not planned or scripted. Does that make sense? So I don't know why he's going this way. I wish you could just release me to be me. But he does not want me to be me. He wants to use me, so he's saying, I'm taking over. And I'm saying, please, can I just allow me to be me? He said, no, I'm not going to let you be you. I'm going to use you today. I want to speak through you. So, daddy, please, can I just be me a little bit? So I can then be a little bit, observe decorum. I can do my introductions and I can preach the gospel. And so he took over. Does that make sense, my darling out there? So he just took over. So I started to pray by singing. I wanted to sing. I couldn't sing. But you found out I was praying. I don't like praying in tongues in public. Because it's meant for private worship. Does that make sense? But then I, I, I blasted in tongues a little bit. And that's not my style. So please forgive me, man of God. It's just the way he's moving me tonight. I hope somebody understands. And that's not my style. I've been here before. That's not my style. Would you help me appreciate the man of God today? Clap for him. Put those hands together. Mama, thank you. Thank you for taking good care of him. I appreciate you so, so very much. Oh, you were doing a good job, by the way. Doing a great job. Doing a great job. Thank you. Both of them are so special to me. Special. And your church is very special. Choir master, well done. Well done. You have great worshipers here. Mm -hmm. I will not spend too much time. He's giving me one hour, but I sense I want to go and do something else at home. So I will just cough out what God wants me to tell you, and I'll go. So it looks like God wants to do something here. I don't know what. I sense, because last night, two days ago, I was still trying to struggle. What do I preach? That was when I called you, man of God, to say, what's the theme? I forgot the theme was glory to glory. I was in closet. So I said, okay, I know it's my office. I just didn't go through the letters. Sometimes I don't go through letters. Letters don't carry this impartation. Paul said, I write to you because I long to see you that I may impart some spiritual gift. So the epistle could not impart. But he wrote in the epistle 
that he would love to see so he could release. If the epistle could have done the release, he would say, let this epistle release. So there are some things that epistles can do. You've got to see me to be able to do it. So those that stay online, don't come to church, they miss out on something. It does that make sense? Don't tell me, ah, I haven't been to this church. No, 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 no. He said, I write to you today, I long to see you, that I may impart some spiritual gifts. Romans chapter 1. Why can't the epistle release it? No, it can't. It can't. Yet it was an inspired epistle. It was God's breath upon, yet could not carry out certain releases. Certain importations. It has to be me and you seeing face to face. Face to face. Face to face. So I want to appreciate you, sir, for inviting me here again today. By the way, we have a conference in our Abuja branch every year. I think in, I don't know which month now. I think it's November, I think. It's a month. It's called the Glory to Glory Conference. The Glory to Glory. So clap for my Abuja branch. So they, they, they are in line with this place. So I like Glory to Glory. Because it's all about changing. So we're going to go to the text. But I'm going to come from a different angle tonight. So please allow me to just tell you. You know there's a prophetic word. There's a sermon. Does that make sense? So I'm not the kind of person that likes to do things in the flesh. I don't do that. You know, there's a lot of flesh kind of stuff going on out there today. All these things you see out there. Hey guys, stay in this church. This is a good word-based church. Put your hands together for Jesus. I'm not joking. I know your pastor. I invite him. For me to invite him to our church regularly tells you who he is to me. I'm a man that likes people that have the word. If you don't have the word, I don't care who you are. I have billions. Just go your own way. I'm not moved by money. Money is not the thing that trips me or moves me. I don't care if you have 15 jets, 75. You, I don't care if you don't teach or preach the word. Bye-bye. Uh, but you're not big. Leave me as small as I am. I have my dignity. Is that okay? Uh, leave me alone. That's who I am. Without any apology. I'm not going to beg anybody for being me. This man's got the word. This man's got, your pastor has got the word. It's balanced. Put your hands together for him. There are very few people. I'm, also, I'm not joking. Very few people. Ah, you don't know we're in trouble in Nigeria. You don't know? Big trouble. Big trouble. In this country, big trouble. Very few preachers still go to the word to teach it the way it is without looking for money, looking for things don't influence them. Very, very few. Every year I struggle to get speakers for my conferences. Struggle. You get this name, you hear the man is telling you that Adam was not the first man formed. Which Bible are you reading? Which Bible? Is it another Bible? Or Krika Bible? The same Bible I'm reading? You get that one? They preach another heresy? Plenty everywhere. This one, another dimension of grace. Not glory, oh, grace. Not glory, grace. Grace that allows you or licenses you to sin. We don't even talk about sin anymore anyway. Oh, sorry, what's sin? Is there sin? I'm not even, is that still sin? I, I, I think God has retired from the sin thing. It's no more sin. So God does not know sin anymore. They are preaching another Bible, another gospel. I warned us over 22 years ago on TV. Another gospel, another Jesus. You are preaching it then, now it's even worse. It's even worse. And people just flow with popularity. They preach what I call Nicodemus gospel. They said, Master, we know God is with you. How? For no man will do all these things except God is with him. Jesus said, no, 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 don't say that. You can do these things and God is not with you. Yes. No, it's not me. It's not me. It's in your Bible. It's not me. It's there. Jesus corrected him. He said, no, you can do these things and God is not with you. Except a man be born again. Eh, how can you tell me no man can do these things except no, you can do it all you can do these things without God being with you there's so many scriptures with that we 
don't have preachers anymore. We don't have the word anymore. We are in trouble. The church needs revival. True revival. When big, big trouble, I'm telling you the truth. There is poison in the food they serve from the pulpit. Death in the pot. They are killing the people. Death in the pot. Death in the pot. And it's targeted at who? Sons of the prophets. Go and read it. If I can poison the sons of the prophets, I have the generation of Christians. Because yeah. they listen to them. Yeah. It was targeted, Second Kings, at the sons of the prophet. Yeah. Elijah said, well, There's death here. The man said, Master, there is death in this pot. We're eating a poisonous meal. Pot is a pulpit. The food we eat from the pulpit is poisonous. Today, poisonous. Social media is spreading it like rampant. Everybody's picking stuff from social media. We don't have teachers anymore. I get hungry because the Bible tells me to some he gave gifts. Apostle, pastor, prophet, teachers. There are people that are anointed and called into the office of teachers. Not everybody. Everybody. There is a time when you ought to be teachers. Hebrews chapter 5. That's different too. That one is time centered. When you are 15 years in Christianity, you should be able to teach a business of faith. But there is a ministry gift called teacher. Teacher. That one no be say time. That one not gift. That's not time. There is one. The time you ought to be teachers. You see, I've need that men should teach you elementary rudiments. Of faith. Now, what means after 20 years of me? You can't teach on the school. Uncle, you can't teach on the school. You can't teach salvation here. You cannot. Uh, that time, you ought to be. That one is not gift. It's just what a time. You now make those people that have been there as a function of time. You now call them teachers. They're not operating in the ministry gift. They don't know Jack. They don't know Jack. Acts 8.31, the Philip asked the Ethiopian eunuch, do you know what you are reading? The man said, how can I know except somebody should guide me? What is teach me? How can I know? Do you know how many people read without knowing what they are reading? I like that guy. He kept on reading. I like him. Do you understand? I don't. Are you reading? I'm reading. Why are you reading? It's God's word. Do you understand it? I don't. How can I understand? Except somebody teach me. Somebody has to guide me. Uncle, why are you reading? I'm still reading. I like him. He was still reading. He was still reading. But I'm waiting for the person God will send to come and guide me. And he came. He said, okay, I'm here to guide you. To ask, who is he talking about? Jesus. And he explains to him, and they got saved. How can I understand? Some people came to Jesus in Matthew 22. You know them. Those Sadducees. I love them. They came to Jesus in Matthew 22. They said, Master, Master, Moses said, Oh, Jesus, help me. Moses said, Note it. Moses said, In the word, in the law, if a man dies and leaves his wife without a child, his brother should take seven wives, seven husbands, brothers, slept. In resurrection, who shall be the husband? Then Jesus answered, You do err. You're in error. Error. You do not know scriptures. No, 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 no. They said, Moses said. Quoting scripture is not the same as knowing scripture. They said, Moses said. Jesus said, You don't know scripture. Uncle, I just quoted scripture. But I don't know it. I just quote the scripture. But the master said, you don't know it. Quoting it is not the same as knowing it. He said, you are in error. So imagine how many of them are in error today. Quoting, but not knowing. Am I communicating? The fact that you can quote does not mean you know. <laughs> The master said, not knowing the scriptures, know the power of God. You can't experience the power without knowing it. This will produce that. But you are in error. You do err. 
The day I found out, I said, you hear? Do you know how many of them are hearing today? Just quoting without knowing. Thinking, how many of you think, once they can quote, they know. And they go to the pulpit and they use so much boldness, audacity, confidence, and you are thinking, you don't know what they are saying. You know, oratory is a dangerous gift. Gift of God, dangerous. I can be so eloquent and I'm saying nonsense. I can eloquently say nonsense. And you are moved with my eloquence, but you have no idea about the content of my eloquence. And it's nonsense. And you're saying, what, what? Do you understand? I don't. What, what? Preacher, preacher, preacher. Does it make sense? It doesn't. Preacher, preacher. Why? The way he's saying it is good. It's the way, not what he's saying. Oh, oh are you getting me? It is the way. It's called oratory. It's called eloquence. It's a gift. It's a gift. Yes, I pray, God, make me an oracle, not an orator. Oracle speaks for him. Orator speaks for himself. May I be an oracle of God? So when you come to there, you will hear his voice. That's why Paul said, though I'm rude in speech, I'm not rude in knowledge. Second Corinthians chapter 8. I may be rude in speech. We don't like the way because he talks. Eh, but I'm not rude in knowledge. What is he saying? Eh, what is he saying? Mm, I don't like the way he said it. Okay, forgive him for the way he said it. What is he saying? Is it, is it the way you are matter? It matters to you or the truth? You like it? Hey, I want him to say it in a good way. So if I say false thing in a good way, you like it? Yes. Do you, 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 you get it now? Do you see how we have made mistakes? You want someone to say it in a good way, even if they are saying a bad thing. So the way is more important than the word. Am I talking? Am I communicating? If I was in church, I'd be holding somebody beating me like this. That's how I preach. I'll be doing like this to you. So you can hear it. Are you hearing it? You say, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Because this is what they must hear. I'm not a gentle preacher. I'm a rugged preacher. Because this thing, you must flog them into, into the world. You must, this is what you must hear. This is what you must hear. Are you with me? It's important. I will do anything to put the word into your spirit, man. In your spirit, man. Because what this man wants and I want is change. Glory to glory. We are changed. The key word is changed. When we behold with an open face, no veil, no wall, no tradition, open, Michael, open means sincerity. Moses had a veil. You don't use a veil. When you come to him, come as you are. Open face. When we behold the Lord as in a mirror, you see like this face to face. Face to face. When we behold, then we are changed. I told them in church, you become what you behold. You become so when Moses beheld him, it looked like him. When you behold openly, after six months, six years, they say, ah, you're not, you're not like him. Why? Because he transforms you. And from transforming, he transfigures you. The word change, actually, is the word trans transformation. There's a difference between transformation and transfiguration. There's a difference. I'm not even going to my message today. I've not talked about message. There's a difference between transformation and transformation. One is metamorphosis, which is from inside, you change, and it shows on the outside. That's the change there. That's the one in uh, Romans chapter 12. Oh, eh? Be not conformed to the world, but be ye... That's the word, oh. the same Greek word. Oh. It's different from transfiguration, oh. Transformation is external change. It's not internal renewal. That's why he said in 2 Corinthians 12, I think, 11, that the false apostles are transfigured into the apostles of light. Not transformed, transfigured. They want to look like you and I. And the fake, you, because you look at the figure, not transformed. Yeah. Yes. Transfigured. 
the word in faith a form of godliness. Mm. Only transfiguration and transformation are two different things. On the outside, they are similar. Uh, on the outside, uh, they are the same. They are the same. Uh, they are the same. On Martin of Transformation, Jesus changed his figure in Matthew 17 and Luke 9. Jesus was not transformed, he just changed his figure and he changed his face and his clothing was shining. He said, ah, and he was transfigured before them. That's not transformation. Because Christ himself was always, he can't be transformed than himself. He just is God walking on earth. Which other form would it be changing to? Hey, which other one? Am I communicating? Are you with me? Which other form? We wanted to change a figure. And it was they saw glory. And because people like figures changing, they said, let us make tabernacle and stay here. Why? Figure. Light and glory external. But this in me, I've been with you every day. You've never said, let's make a manacle with the word of God working with you. The word was with you all this while. You didn't say, let's make a manacle. They call it, my people, they call it sea finish. Sea finish. No being this. But I was doing miracles. I was showing you dimensions of my glory. But you didn't understand it. I just showed you one which has to do with the light on the outside. I can shine and radiate. That's transfiguration. And you are enamored with that. You are arrested. You say, carry it away. Hey, I want this one alone. How come that's what we want? We want that one. We want that one. I told you in Gen chapter 2, I showed you my glory when I did a miracle. And this is the beginning of miracles. And Christ manifested forth. The manifestations of his glory. He showed them in chapter 2. He showed them in chapter 11 when he said, This Lazarus, I will show you. This chapter 2, turning water to wine, turning water to wine is to make you come believe me that I'm, a, I'm an apostle, I'm a Messiah. And the Bible says, And his disciples believed him, in him. You remember that passage? I just want to convince you, so I just turn water to wine. But when he said you should turn stone to bread, why did you turn it? The same one that refused to turn stone to bread, turn water to wine. <laughs> because you don't know him. He will not, he does not need to prove to the devil that he's the son of God. Mm, the devil was once saying, if you are the son of God, Stone to bread. Nah, I'm not gonna waste my glory. You don't need to know. You know I'm the son of God. I won't confuse you. If you say I'm not, go and come. Go and turn to the lagoon. Go and jump inside. That's your business. I will not convince you. I'm the son of God. But my disciples, I need them to believe in me. And I say, God, please help me to let these people know that the one that walks with them is the Messiah. I will turn water to wine. And they believed in him. A dimension of his glory. God will show you multiple dimensions of himself. In the name of Jesus. Every time he shows his glory. Is to further. To see my don't know yet. To glory. To glory. I will show you. A part of me. Others did not know. From glory to glory. That's who I am. You can't have all of me. Because you don't know all of me. So much about me that you're here to know. I've just given you a glimpse. And I have a lot more to show you. So sometimes when you see, when you see needs, you think, can God meet this one? Yes, remember, I showed you water to wine. Now you think this is a dead case. Because Lazarus has been there for four days. There's a part of me that can still turn things around. Do you get it? Don't you, you think this can defy my pain? You don't know me. You think I cannot turn things out? You look at how dare you to show you the body was still warm. I want the tomb to be. When I show up, no excuses. When I show up, 
four days after to show you with God nothing shall be impossible. From glory to glory. I'm not even going to talk about the glory of God. If I have to do that, this man of God will have taught you doxa or doxa. Not, or not. I won't go there. I won't talk about you, you. The glory you should be showing. So I'm more concerned about you, not him. Because I, I can tell you about him. I don't want to talk to you about him today. Because you should know him. You should know there's nothing. I don't want to talk to you about his glory. But, but I want to tell you about your glory. Something about you, you don't know, I will show you today. Something about you. So you can know how you can then show forth. Because we're talking, hey, God bless you, his glory. We're talking about you, not him. But it says to you, you in Second Corinthians must behold him. Him with open face. And then what you see will change you. I, I pray you see it. Because you can be beholding and not seeing. You can be beholding and looking for his fault. Because I can be beholding you and the purpose of beholding is not to be like you. But it's to query you like this. I thought you'd be saying how awesome you are. How wonderful you are. I want to be like you. I'm more like you. Teach me. I want more. There's something about you. So teach me what I'm going to say. Teach me how I can reflect this glory. So when I turn around, they see you in me. Put your hands together for Jesus. They see you where? And to do that, to do that, to do that, man of God, allow me, oh, allow me. Let me beg man of God to allow me. I should go ahead, sir. Thank you, man of God. To do that, I have to tell you something that is very, very important about the glory of God, about who you are. Who you are. Church, three, four, five months. Mini Bible school with me for three days. Asking me questions. Because it was too difficult to understand. This is one of the six. And God said, the glory of God, oh, image. Let shall do. I preached it seven years ago because I've come to know some things too that I did not know. Let them have what? Dominion over the feast of the sea, over the fowls of the earth, over the cattle, over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Dominion. Someone shout dominion. dominion. Shout dominion. dominion. Say it like you mean it. Dominion. Next verse. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him. Male and female created him. The next verse. And God blessed them. So verse 26 is different from verse 28. Is that clear? So God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth, subdue it. And do again, have dominion. Now, verse 28 and 26 are different. In verse 26, he didn't say God bless them. He said, let us make them. Let us make them. Between verse 26 and 28, there is, and so God created them. In verse 28, now I've created them in the realm of spirit. Let me now bless my creation. Be fruitful. I'm going somewhere. Multiply. I'm giving you resources to have dominion. And have dominion. In verse 26, let them have dominion. 28, you need a blessing to have dominion. I'm going somewhere. In 26, my plan, my dream, my mandate for them, let us make man. Let them, have dom- let them become us on earth. We will have dominion there. Let them rule here as we rule there. Do you get the point? I just finished creating animal kingdom, creating the planets, constellations, everything. The last day, sixth day. Let's now make man. Everything we've made, we have to have a king to rule it. Let's make man. I'm going somewhere, sir. 
to have dominion. Let's now bless. I want to bless that man so he will make his job easy. I bless you. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. And don't forget your mandate. Have dominion. So, in chapter 2, man was formed after man was created. In chapter 3, man sinned. And in chapter 2, God gave man a garden. And man was living in the garden. And in chapter 3, man fell. And God removed man from the garden. And then the question comes. Did, God, did man lose the dominion mandate? Salem. Salem. Listen to me. Man did not lose the dominion mandate. Man lost his relationship with God. I'm coming somewhere. Just give me. I'll give you scriptures now. I'm losing. You're losing my garden. Lord dominion mandate. I'm going somewhere. So, you have offended me? Lest they touch the tree of life and live forever. Let's cast them out. Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. 23. I don't want them to eat this tree and they will live forever. Go out! So, you this of us. God bless you, sir. You are not going to understand it. He wasn't let us make Christian. It is a let Christian have dominion. Man. Eh? Man. Who? Man. Who? Man. Who? Man. No Christian. I'm going to somewhere. So we don't understand it. So what Jesus came to do, I'll show you from scripture. What he came to do was there are two dimensions of dominion. Natural and spiritual. Well, spiritual. Adam did not lose the natural mandate to subdue the earth, to rule in the air, sea, yes. that's what we call cruises, to show you we're in charge, they've subdued the earth, all kinds of vehicles, we're in charge, tell somebody we're in charge, fully, fully. that's man without Christ. Man, eh, those guys don't have Christ. But, but spiritual dominion, Satan is still beating them back and forth. Because Satan took him out of God's presence. And Satan told Jesus, Come, I will give you the whole kingdoms, for it has been given to me by who? By Adam. There is a first Adam and last Adam. That's where I'm going. I'll show you now. There was a first Adam and a last Adam. They both came for two different missions. One came to restore you and I to have spiritual dominion in addition to a natural dominion. Am I communicating? Let us make man, not let's make a believer. Man, man. And man without Christ is still behaving like God, still ruling the thing you call earth till tomorrow. Animals are not in charge. We are in charge. Am I, am, are, you, are you with me? The birds are not in charge. We are in charge. We are in charge. But you can be in charge and not have a relationship with God because the devil came to distort that. So Jesus said, okay, I'm going to go and snatch that spiritual authority and dominion from the devil. And to do that, I will show you from Colossians. I have to also rule the three realms in the spirit. You saw why Jesus ruled the oceans when he said, Hush, be still. Up. Sorry. But there are two dimensions of this glory. I'm going somewhere. Two dimensions of this glory. I will show you some things now. Two dimensions so that we can be part of that image, not just this image. First Corinthians 15, have we have taken part in this image, we should also be part of that image of Christ. Because Christ also came and so when we are born again, we are supposed to also now become Christ-like Christians, embrace spiritual authority 
to also exercise dominion over the devil, over principalities, over powers, over thrones, over demons, in the revolution for the that you see across plus natural dominion. Listen to me. Adam lost spiritual, not natural. And so my problem with the church is we speak more spiritual. I'm going somewhere and ignore natural. So there are people here that should be exercising dominion in entertainment, in the natural, exactly, in the entertainment industry, in music industry, in finance. And you just think, oh, I'm born again to only succeed to cast out devils. And so you don't mind being a failure here, being subdued here, as long as I'm speaking in tongues. Do you get my point? He didn't lose this dominion. He had it. It was a mandate for man. Mandate. When God kicked him out, God didn't say from today, you don't have dominion anymore. No, 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 no. God didn't say that. He didn't say animals are not over you. He didn't say that to the Bible. He still went out, Cain, and, and all his siblings, Abraham, all of them. That's why God told Abraham in Genesis 22. As your seeds are. And God gave Abraham two kinds of seeds. As you see the stars of the heaven and the dust on the seashore. Natural, spiritual. Abraham. Natural, spiritual. I will give you seeds that will be innumerable as the stars of the heaven. Who are those ones? We, the church, spiritual children of Abraham. These physical children of Israel and Ishmael. This is the dust of the earth. For dust thou art, from the dust thou shalt return. So God gave Abraham children from the dust, the flesh. See, as the dust you see everywhere, so shall your children be everywhere. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Also, you have children from the stars of the heavens. You are not. I'm not that or Israelite. Faith. Put your hands together. They are looking at me that they don't understand. You understand me, sir? Dominion. Somebody shout dominion. Because I want us to show the glory here, not just here. That's where I'm going. From glory to glory. Exactly. Here, even in the natural. Oh, my, my, my. Even that we can show glory to glory. When we go out in the marketplace, we can show glory to glory, not just there. And if we need to demonstrate God's power there, we will with our spiritual authority. But right here, we must also show what? Glory to glory. Hallelujah. Don't forget that ever. Because some of us have taught only this and ignored that. And we tend to think, oh, the world is supposed to be better than us here. Well, we are just better than them here. No. I'm, I'm, both places, I'm going to fight them. Me? I will win here, I will win there. I'm not, eh? I will win here, I will win there. Hey, hey, how can I have that and I lose here? How? How? How can I be born again? Be a disadvantage in the natural. And being born again be at a disadvantage here. Then you will now be subdued here. If you're not born again, then you can become you have to be known here. Abba. Let us make man. Let them have dominion. Adam did not lose that mandate. And Adam's seeds over the years are still having Dominion here from what? Glory to glory. Now they are now struggling to go to space. Only they've left us behind, Nigeria. Where is this struggling to give us Nepal? <laughs> Where is this struggling with Nepal? Nations are struggling to say, oh, go to the new place. India say, I'm going to get my own place. Don't come there. They are telling you we are exercising dominion in the, uh, the fouls of the air. In that air, we will dominate the place. We're in charge. We're in charge. Praise God. I said, praise God. That's why the Bible says, the glory of the latter house shall be greater. Let me give you one or two scriptures. So don't forget, like I said, when God made man, he made man to have dominion, then he gave man relationship. But man messed up and God kicked him out. Does that make sense? So man lost spiritual relationship because she lost that relationship with me that simply means that now the enemy can thread upon you 
Now you're under the control of the devil. So the devil now say, ah, oh, finally, we're now struggling, me and man, I'm the God of this world. Not the earth. The world is different. Cosmos ion is different. Of this world, the systems. But, but man is still ruling the world. The earth. The earth, not the devil. But Jesus came. Let's go to Hebrews. Uh, let me read Psalm number 8 first. Psalm number 8 verses 4 to 8. You know that passage, don't you? I'm going to read quite a number what dominion mandate is. Because the moment you don't understand it, you're going to be in crisis. Because you keep thinking only spiritual terms. Maybe dominion. What is man? This is, this is, this is what is a Christian. What is man? Many times that we read the Bible, sir, I get angry. We read them and not understanding when God is speaking to mankind, humanity. We keep thinking something about Christians every time. No. When he says, seest thou a man, did that in his business. He wasn't speaking about seest thou a believer. No, a man. Any man, no. Hey, we don't see it. We read it with only Christian eye. Seest thou a Christian brother. No, a man. A man. Diligent in his business. Any man. He will stay before kings. So why should a Christian not be that man? We now come and start speaking in tongue and say, God, please, let me stay before king. Eh, 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 eh. The principle is diligence. Go on. So, let's not make you rich. Prayer opens doors for you to know what you should do. Are you with me? I pray, by the way, very much. But when I pray, my prayer point is different. Lord, show me something to do. Give me wisdom. I know what you have given me already. The mandate. Show me the way. Guide me. Let me know where to step into, where to invest into. What not to do. Guide me. Stop me when I'm going to make a mistake. So, I don't pray, Lord, give me money. Because you're going to give me, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It doesn't drop money from heaven. Is that okay? Uh -huh. So you have to understand the Bible. You know the Bible. It says, what is man? This is just general. Man, you're getting this. Huh? This is the same dominion mandate. What is man that thou art mindful of him? The son of man that thou visited him. Next. Next, next. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory. Glory to glory. He has crowned man, Abinisho, with what? Glory and honor. Crowned you. So you can have dominion. Is there. Thou made him to have one. I can't hear you. Church, I can't hear you. Are you angry with me? That's your business. Thou hast made him to have dominion. He can be angry and put you in the world. I tell them in church, that's your business. My members, are, he, he told me to be free, so I'm free. You told me to be free. Am I right, sir? So I'm being free. This is what I tell in my church. I say, you are, that's your business, but I don't like it, I will say it. <laughs> that's your business. He has made him to have dominion. You are saying he didn't. He did, he's then no man. Because we have to sort this thing out. Man. This is a Christian, man. Christ had not come. Man. Man. So I get angry when those men take over. I can't, I can't be the best. He said, I do now go and pray. Uh -uh. He's there. Go have dominion. <laughs> uh -uh. Go have dominion. Then they want to go and pray. Don't pray. I'm telling you, go have dominion. Don't hide on that prayer. We had we hide laziness on that prayer. I want to go and pray. Don't pray. I'm giving you the word. Go and have what? Dominion. This church can have dominion everywhere. You can take over this whole place. What are you telling me? I told them in our church, I'm not trying to struggle for Lagos. Sululere. I, I will fight for Sululere. Dominion. I told them. My master, I said, every Sunday, we will be the biggest. We will work hard. It's not by prayer. Because no, he thinks it's annoying me. Because those other people are having it. We are not having it. It's pending me. And the man has told you, go have dominion. You're saying, you're praying again. I'm saying, go and have it. You say, God, have Go have it. <laughs> ah! Somebody shout, ha! Ah! Ah! <laughs> ah! Have dominion. Man! Man! Christians are just so timid. Stir up the gift of God as in thee. For God has not given you the spirit of fear. Stop being timid and scared and frightened and wicked. Stop that. Go out there and have dominion. Yes. They are not better than you. Yes. They are not more educated than you. Yes. They are not more exposed than you. Yes. 
Why must you always go there with Teddy up behind us if you are disabled? Why? 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 He said, because I'm a Christian. How? I, I, it annoys me. How can I be a Christian not be a disadvantage? How? I don't understand how. Eh, you know they are better than us. How can I be better than you? You went to school, they went to school. You have brain, you have brain. You have God, they don't have God. And you say they are better than you. And you say they are better than you. How? We're just too frightened. Go and have dominion. It's there. He said, God made him to have. The, um, James 3 7 says it as well. It's crowned him with glory. Let me tell you some few things about how what Adam did when Adam lost. The devil took spiritual authority or dominion from the devil, from uh, Adam. For every kind of this is it. You see, man, every kind of beast, every kind. Tell me which one has not been tamed. Has been tamed of mankind. Oh. Go, go, yo. God. God said every kind. There's none. I've been tamed. Because man is saying we have having dominion. They cannot tame us. We can tame them. Dominion mandate. Simple scripture. Every kind of beast birth. Everything in the sea, everywhere. Tamed. Tamed by man. And the one that is here to be tamed, they will tame it. That last time they went to that person that went, that submarine that went and they died. Those guys, they will try again. Those people, they will try again. They've lost, they've died. Let's try again. Those people, until the tame. We too, we used to do it too. We used to. Our own is just forest. Igboru Mole. <laughs> Your ancestors will go there. All the Yingwing, all the Anjono, we will tame you. <laughs> African man, Igboru Mole. That's what we tame. <laughs> we know how to tame Igboru Mole. I would just see me. You know, movies. They will say, I'm going to Igboru Mole to go and tame the Anjono there. <laughs> At least they are trying. My ancestors are trying. They are trying somewhere. Yeah, they are trying. <laughs> when a man is taming the one there, yes. they say a few times, they will do what? Those guys, dominion mandate. They have it here. They, so there's something in them. They just say, we are man. We are supposed to rule. They know it. They may not read the Bible, but there's something in them tells them, we are made, we are, we are created to rule. We are created to be in charge. They know it. They will sit again, scientists. Let's try again. They will pump money. Go again. How can that thing defeat us? Go again. They will try again, those guys. And when they conquer it, they will come back and then toast their champion and say, we did it. Where next? Next? What are we going to Next? Where? You know, see, where? We will, anywhere else we'll conquer. We've conquered the moon. We've conquered everywhere. Which new world can we go to and conquer again? Dominion. You must know who you are. Your job is to go and conquer that place. I'm a businessman. Go there and conquer. I'm a fashionista. Go there and conquer. I'm a hairdresser. Go there and conquer. How, man of God, create a hairstyle that has not been created before. People will come and buy. Who did it? Go and listen. That's what? Glory. That's it. You can't have glory if you think you are to be dominated. From glory to glory. In this realm, not just that realm. In this realm as well. Not just that realm. In this realm. Don't be satisfied with where you are. Think of what next to conquer. Where next to go. How else to dominate. I want to have dominion. From glory to glory to glory to glory. Put your hands together. We have to enough proof that men, this one, are we conquer? Are we conquer? Praise God. The devil took spiritual authority from Adam. Luke chapter 4 verse 5 to 7. He said it. Jesus took it back. From the devil, he said, All powers in heaven, on earth, and beneath the earth. He said it. Matthew 28, the three realms. Read your scriptures. He said, it. He said, He has been given to me, okay? The devil went there to God, Jesus went there to take it back. Matthew 28, verse 18. He said, All powers everywhere is given to me in heaven, 
on earth and beneath the head has been given to me. Matthew 28. Go ye therefore and preach the gospel. So you can imagine him saying, I now send you because now spiritually we're in charge. And in Luke chapter 10, he told them, he said to them, he said, I beheld Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Go therefore, give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. That's spiritual dominion. That's spiritual. That's what Jesus came to do. That's what I'm going to. He came not to give us this dominion. Because we never lost this one. Eh, natural, spiritual. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. You need to understand that. First Corinthians 15 explains it. People think he came to just do eh, This one is a sin problem. Christ came to deal with the sin problem. Man sinned and fell short of the glory. I'm coming to restore that spiritual glory. So the devil will not kick you around anymore. You can kick them around. Here you now have spiritual what? Authority. Not only natural dominion that you had, but now spiritual. Does that make sense? That's why Jesus did not focus on this. Money. Mm -mm. He focused on this when he walked on earth. Ooh. Sir, thank you, sir. You understood. He, he was never lost. He never, even we didn't lose it. Why would I be trying to give you what you had? He didn't. This was what he came to fix. He came to fix that. I said, this is what I've come for, and I'm going to fix it. And after that, man, you're not whole. We are complete in him. In Christ. Complete. In Christ, now complete. You now have that and this. Put your hands together, everybody. Put those hands together. I'm rounding up now. I've not even scratched my surface. So I, I hope you're getting something. Are you getting something? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 again. Just to open your eyes to a few things. From verse number... Ah, let me start from verse 44. 1 Corinthians 15 is quite a lengthy verse. Just want to explain to you about different authorities and dominion and, and stuff. It is only weakness is resting body. And it's a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man was made a quickness spirit. How be it? That was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy, and the second man is of the Lord from heaven, as is only such an one. The image, somebody shout, the image of the healthy sweet shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Put your hands together, everybody. Spiritual, natural, first Adam, last Adam. Dominion at both realms. Dominion. We should have it. We must have it. So when, when, when that guy, or those guys came to Jesus to tempt him in Matthew 22, and they said, Master, Master, this coin, uh, should we pay Caesar uh, taxes? I love Jesus. He asked a simple question. Let me see that coin. Sorry, whose image? Caesar's. Are you sure? Yes. Watch me. Give to Caesar. What is that? And give to God. <laughs> Whose image are you? You belong to God. Because you are created in God's image. So you use what? Whose image is this? Caesar's. Look, I've come for give to Caesar. But you, you, give to God what belongs to God. So what belongs to him? Look at you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. In the beginning, he made you in his own image. So give yourself to him. Because you belong to him. So that small thing, give to Caesar, but you give yourself everything belongs to God. He was speaking image language. Image language. Because he understood what he was saying. He understood he said, what I tell him. On that morning, what's, whose image is there? And that's like those that don't understand spiritual things don't understand it. God is bigger than money. Tell me the coin on earth with God's image. Tell me the coin. No! But every man is made after God's image. You that make the coins, you are made after God's image. The coin maker. Let me go there. I preach it in Canada. I say, coin maker. That I refuse to give himself to God. Because you're all coin makers. And you are made in God's image. So he said, whose image is this? That's like those that struggle for, to pay tithe. They don't understand it. Those that struggle to give God their time or their talent or their, their lives. They don't understand it. Because you are made in God's image. 
So you should give yourself to him. If you can give Caesar his own, give to God his own. Put your hands together, everybody. Give to God what is so. Except you are saying you are not made in God's image. Then we cannot discuss. Maybe you are making Satan's image. <laughs> Whose image are you? Ask him. Say, neighbor, neighbor. Whose image are you? Get an answer, get an answer, get an answer. <laughs> Put your hands together, everybody. Get an answer. You must know whose image you are. The, the last Adam came to give spiritual dominion that we lost. Let's go to Hebrews 2, verse 5 to 14. I'm going to round up with this. Hebrews chapter 2. I have a lot more, but my time is up. Hebrews 2, verse 5. Give it to me in media. Is that it? Yeah. For I like this place. But unto, unto the angels has he not put his subjection on the world to come. Whereof we speak. What next? Next verse. Simon of God. See. But in one certain place, testify that guy, then that guy David, saying, What is man? You see, he's trying to say the same thing. Hebrews is preaching what I just preach. You will see it now. I don't know how to use message and other things. It's better than me in that area. I'm an old Christian. You call King James believer. And I'm learning now the modern day message and living translation. So I will go there very soon for you. But once <laughs> it's better than me there. I'm a King James brother. Don't forget, forgive me. What is man that I am mindful of him? The son of man that you visited him. The same passage I read to you. Next verse. Uh, next verse. Thou made him a little lower than the angels. Thou crowned him with glory and honor. You set him over the works, I mean dominion, the works of your hands. Next verse. Thou hast put all things, listen to this, listen. Please don't forget, listen. All things under his feet, dominion. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now, we see not yet all things put under him. So you see, in one verse, he shifted from natural to spiritual. When he said, but now, he now left the natural. He first said, everything is under him natural. Oh, but now, let's go to spiritual. Not all things here. Look at the next verse. He now says, but see Jesus. You didn't get it. You are getting it. He first said, we see not all things put under him, but now we see Jesus. Oh, okay. What is man? First Adam. But we see Jesus. Last Adam. The one passage he just created the two Adams. But we see Jesus. A little lower than the angels suffering death. Crowned with glory and honor, but that he may, he by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. The next verse. That's the man that gave us all things. Next, that's him. This is the one that will not make us have all things. For he became whom? By whom are all things? By whom all things in bringing many sons? Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Where are the sons? Where are the sons? Put your hands together for Jesus. So their salvation, perfect. That perfect means matured, whole, needing nothing. So immediately, the writer of Hebrews says, man is made natural to have dominion. But he has not gotten all yet because he still lacks spiritual. We now see Jesus coming to fix that one that is lacking the spiritual. Put your hands together. That's what Hebrews says. We see Jesus. If I said, we see that not all things, but we see Jesus. Connecting Jesus to that which he lacked. He now came to fix it. And he now have made sons. He's the captain of his sons. Many of us to continue to be perfect through our salvation. Put your hands together, everybody. I'm going to ask you to rise because of my time. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. I want us to exercise our dominion. You need to understand who you are. It helps you to know how to walk, how to move. It helps you to understand with you. Colossians tells us that image of Christ. I have a problem today with it. And we've ignored this. So, I us that. And we all believed it. They will defeat you because you are born again. They will lead you exactly. And so we believe that they will lead us. Hey, we will, oh, God bless you. You will serve them. So we go with the Bible and say, we're supposed to serve you. I'm not supposed to serve you. You can serve me. It's an open place. I'm supposed to have dominion here. Yeah, I never lost it. Any business you are doing, go and have dominion. Anything you put your hands to do, you should prosper. Go there. If you have more advantage, you have wisdom in the house. You have God with you. You have the Holy Ghost with you. In fact, it says you are changed from glory to glory by His Spirit. By His Spirit. By 
by his spirit, he will guide you, he will teach you, he will help you. Lift your eyes to me on both in the natural and in the spiritual. Talk like a defeated person. Lord, I judge. Talk to God. I hold you so I can, I can go and show minion like that. Dominion there and rule. I will go there and rule. I will go there and rule. I will go there and rule. Markebo Shataba. From glory to glory, from glory to glory, from glory to glory, I will go there. I will shine. I'm going to be a star. I'm going to rule. I'm going to reign. Yes, 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 yes. In Jesus' name we pray. You are called to glory. All of you. Must radiate glory. From glory to glory. Is that clear? There's a passage I like. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15. One verse. One verse. Very, I like it because I like it. Verse 43. There is one glory of the sun. Another glory of the moon. Another glory of the stars. But I like that one. You know, you know, no, 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 43, 43, 43. I like, give it to me. I like that one because when you go to the stars, because I like stars, celebrities, I want to be a star. I don't know about you, but okay. First Corinthians 15, is it there? 40, oh, forgive me, I'm, it's my glasses. Forgive me. 41, I'm sorry. 41, 41, because I like it. I want you to see the word stars. And I'll, I'll show you something. But that is where we are struggling with ourselves. There is one glory of The sun. Another glory of what? It's still glory. You see what? You see what? You may be a banker, shine in glory. I'm a teller, it's still glory. As a teller, you're getting it. In ministry, I will shine in glory. I'm not going to compare myself with Dan Gote. His own glory is still my own glory. Oh, you think? I, I won't shine, not glory. Uh, even if your own shine, still glory, sir. That's the way it's still glory. He now says, Another glory of the stars. For one star, I still glow thanks today. You are still stars. Shine. I'm a star. Don't let anybody still follow you. Hey, can I see my stars? Shout, Yeah. yeah. It's a deep word. The fact that that church is bigger than my church doesn't mean I'm not a good pastor. I'm a star, sir. When, whenever I walk around, I walk like a star. Your star may be brighter. I'm still a star. I'm still shining in my own glory. <laughs> they may differ. Don't you ever feel bad, intimidated. You are shining. That's about I'm a star. I, I, I'm not sure my stars are here today. Where are my stars? They've, they've not come. They have not come. Where are my stars? Who will shine from glory to glory? Somebody shout from glory to glory. Shout from glory to glory. We are all stars. Lift your hands up. Let me bless you. Father, we thank you for your son's daughters. Thank you for the word today. I ask you follow this word up with power, with demonstration of the spirit and power in the name of Jesus. I ask you release your sons and daughters to go out there and shine and shine and shine in the name of Jesus. I ask you change them from glory to glory by your spirit in the name of Jesus. I ask you International Festival of Victory 2023 Feel Glory to Glory